Every time you step on your on this field, man, it's yeah. an opportunity, man. Yeah. It's an opportunity for God, man. We blessed to be here. Yeah. And think Amen, about your brother. two brothers, man. The two brothers who wish they could be here, man. Little Will said, man, he missed us, man. Yeah. So make sure you come out here, man. You get every ounce of energy you got, man. Yeah. Cause you owe that to Little Will, man. You owe that to Pope Dog, man. The boys put a lot in for us, man. Yeah. They sacrifice for a lot for us, Amen. man. Yeah. You sacrifice for a lot for this, man. Yeah. You sacrifice a lot to be here today, man. Yeah. All you need to do today is, is just all we've ever done. All you gotta do is just be you. Just do what you've ever done. Okay, the, the question I'm asking you this, do you have another level of attacking you? You know what I mean? People have seen you attack before, they've, they've seen you be aggressive, they've seen you be physical, they've just, okay, but tonight, not like tonight. They, they haven't seen you like tonight. Tonight there's something different. The way we attack the line of scrimmage, the way we make tackles behind the line of scrimmage, the way we don't wor worry about blocks, the way we just run through blocks, the way we separate ourselves from offensive linemen, everything we do today, it's at a different level tonight. Because this performance has been coming, we can understand it's been coming. It's nice that we're gonna let it out but in front of the entire country. I like the way we look, going out there, know what we're playing for tonight. Playing for an awful lot out there on that field tonight. You just think about what you're playing for out there. Yeah, okay? whether you're playing for your family or your friends back home, okay? Everything that's possibly in there, all your personal goals that are out there, the team goals, playing to keep our championship hopes alive. That's what you're going out there playing for tonight. That's what you're going out there and playing for. You're going out to play to love the game of football. To fly around, to fly around, go hit someone square in the face and love it. Go kick someone's ass to get a win. That's what it is. And then look around this room, man. Look around this room. Look around this room right now. Playing for each other, playing for this family. It's just us, you're on the road. On the road in a tough environment, you're playing for this family. Nikwes Brown sneaks in, steps back, here comes pressure. Gonna flush the quarterbacks, so he's gonna throw it on the run. No, he can't get it away, and he's knocked down back at the 25-yard line. Goes to his left, throws to a wide open receiver down at the 36-yard line. Bulldogs with their first chance in the ball game. Fake inside to Holloway, throws down the middle, receiver open at the five, touchdown! We started off with a big play on the first play of the game, and anytime you can do that, you really can get into a rhythm. You can go play up tempo, and then it's, it's great having a quarterback. They came out, played us very differently than maybe we'd expect them to play us, and uh, showing some different coverages. You know, a lot of stuff they hadn't done before, and we were able to take advantage of that by having a guy like Dak Prescott, who's going to see the coverage, see the weakness in the coverage. And our touchdown play, you know, we get we get Fred Ross matched up on their their middle linebacker, and, and that's a that's a good matchup for us. It's important to get off to a fast start, especially with our offense, uh, a tempo offense, uh, get going, get some tempo going early, get that confidence, and uh, just play in the rhythm of the game. They're going to throw to a receiver who grabs it at the 25 and gets knocked down at the 26-yard line. Lock the quarterback, takes the snap, retreats to throw, gets some time, throws, and the ball is batted and intercepted. I really feel happy for Gary Green that he made the play. The guys sometimes tease him about his uh, his ability to catch, and um, and it was Tory Dale uh, did a great job getting his hands up in the air, batting the ball down, which we had talked about because we knew they were going to start the game with a lot of quick passes. And uh, Gary was Johnny on the spot, but you've seen a lot of those balls um, on those low balls like that just kind of squirm out. And Gary did a great job of securing possession. Pressure coming and in trouble, and Locke is dropped back inside the 15-yard line. We knew that we had some ways that we could get him, um, get him affected. He's a young quarterback who's who's um, who's got a hard task of, of, you know, on the job training the SEC. And uh, and I thought our guys up front were relentless, whether we were calling a pressure or not, in terms of making him feel very uncomfortable in the pocket. 61 career field goals. He sends this one up, and he is good from about the 21-yard line. Wow. Well, the crowd is making a little noise, and partly uh, the noise you hear is the rain coming down, and suddenly we get a torrent of rain. I don't know you can practice anything of what we saw on Thursday night with how hard it was coming down at times. And, uh, you know, because there's, there's a little bit of difference between uh, it, it raining and what happened on Thursday night in that second quarter right there, where, I mean, it just, I mean, it was pouring buckets of rain on top of you. Hunter Bradley is the snapper, and he gets him a good one, and they block it. It is blocked, it is loose, it is rolling. Missouri trying to pick it up. 36-yard field goal, I think, from where they'll put it down. Snap is put down, and the kick is away, and the kick is good. 
And it is going to be Holloway at the two, fumbles it, picks it up. He's in trouble inside the 10, breaks out to the 20, breaks out to the 30. He's open field to the 40. He's at the 50, a foot race at the 40, caught from behind, and inside the 30-yard line is finally run down and knocked out of bounds. Laycock down to six. He moves Shumpert from left to his right side, gets the snap, gets some time, throws it in the end zone, fighting for it, and to the ball for a touchdown is Duranya Wilson. The play before I actually uh, missed Duranya, I, I squeezed the ball too hard and uh, tried to throw it way harder than I needed to, and that, I, I think that kind of just allowed me to realize that, I mean, it's just rain, it's not that bad, and I uh, came back on the next throw and I uh, just gave him a chance, and he went up and made a great play. We were trying to make sure, I mean, it was coming down so hard, it was hard to execute. Finding what are, what are some plays we're going to execute at a high level in, in, in that type of uh, uh, weather conditions. And, um, you know, we, we want to make a throw that Dak could make. And, uh, uh, you know, and, and they, at, at that point of the game, it was kind of surprising. They were singling up, just playing one-on-one on, on, on Bear. And uh, they gave, gave them the one-on-one matchup. It wasn't going to be a real tough read. Or, and, uh, you know, really just w allowed Dak to just take a one-on-one -on -one shot, throw it to Bear without having to throw it into a tight window or anything else. So uh, I, I think the coverage certainly helped the play. Give to the running back, trying to get outside, has some room over the 15 and down to the 14-yard line. Pickup of six on the plate as Richie Brown finally gets there to make the tackle will be a third and four. And they're going to give it again to Hansborough, trying to put cut back, good hole, and he's open at the 15 to the five, and he is in to the end zone for a touchdown. And we go to halftime with Mississippi State clinging to a one-point lead over Missouri at 14 to 13 here at Faroe Field. We really talked about at halftime of, of, of trying to take our game to another level, and, and we knew at halftime that um, it was a tight game and that the third quarter would be crucial. We knew we were getting the ball first in the third quarter and we really challenged ourselves. We challenged ourselves to, to show an, um, an identity and a demeanor that really we hadn't all year. You know, Missouri was defending East champions back to back. And, um, and you know, that's certainly something that we want to be. We want to be in Atlanta. They've been there the last few years. So when, when someone has something that you want, you have to go take it from them. Give him a little time. He's going to throw it into the sideline. Wilson comes back, makes the catch over the 50, running the sidelines to the 30, to the 20, and finally pushed out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. One-on-one -on -one with Wilson to the right. He runs a slant, and the throw, and the catch, and Wilson's got it for a touchdown. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage. He got the inside position. Dennis was on the coverage, and Wilson with his second touchdown of the night. We try to set up different combinations to see who's the guy they're going to leave one on one, and they happen to leave to run you one on one on that play. And uh, you know, and, I, and, and like I said, it's great having a guy like Dak Prescott who he's going to get up. He's going to see. He saw the the one on one matchup with uh, with the run you, and it's an easy easy uh, throw and catch for him. Jefferson and Brown of the ends. Brown and Brown, Beniquez. And Richie at uh, linebacker, they're chasing Drew Locke, retreating, throws it upfield, throws the interception as he just put it up for grabs, and the Bulldogs, Kevon Coleman, pulled it down. Kevon, I thought, played really well. He, 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 probably his best game of the season as well. And um, the interception, he, he really did a nice job of just following the quarterback's eyes. Um, you know, his, his man stayed in and blocked, so he just zoned off. Um, again, a great job by the guys up front, really putting the quarterback under pressure. And, and, and the quarterback, when quarterbacks get off the spot uh, at any level of football, they, they become worse players. And, and he made a mistake that he wishes he had back. Um, but he threw you maybe the hardest interception to catch, kind of the slow one right at you. Um, you've seen those drop of fourth. So for Kevon to really secure possession, look the ball in, that was a big, big time play. And really, I thought, put the hammer on the game early in the third. We just knew that it was going to come out and adjust to something that they seen us doing early in the game by switching safeties around a lot. And I just knew like what they wanted to do and I know they wanted to do a, uh, the big post. And I just want to be underneath it like uh, I was supposed to be. So, and I, and I think my, off, my defense alignment for um, getting pressure on the quarterback, making him scramble out. He's got some time. He's gonna throw it in the middle, caught by Wilson at the 20, dies forward to the 19, will be shy of the first down. 
Weston Graves attempts a 36-yard field goal. This one's on the way. It's got plenty of leg, and it is good. Well, he kicks it right through the uprights, and Mississippi State takes a 24-13 lead in the football game. Witter in there as a running back right in the middle of the field, retreating his lock. Wants to run, but he's not going to get anywhere. He is taken down back at the 45-yard line by big yep. Chris Jones. Chris played his best game, I think, in, in his college career. Um, he's, he's been getting better week in and week out, which which is all you can ask of any of your players, regardless of, you know, of, you know, hype and recruiting expectations and whatnot. He's just an improving football player. And if he just, if he continues on that mindset and continues to, uh, to work every week to improve, you know, he's going to continue to see the results like he saw um, really causing havoc in the backfield uh, last Thursday night. I practice all week on um, being a disruptive force in the um, inside. And the um, <clears throat> preparation was great and um, came out and utilized it. Bulldogs on the 29, Missouri Territory. Quarterback draw, gets a block. Prescott to the 25, to the 20. Fights his way inside the 15. Knocked out of bounds, just inside the 12. And now, rolling to his right, looking in the end zone. Wide open receiver, leaping catch. That's number five who made that catch. Fred Brown with a leaping catch at the edge of the end zone. It's another one with Dak, just uh, analyzing, taking what the defense gives them, uh, analyzing the field. And, you know, and, it, and to me, it, it just shows our receiver core the trust they have in Dak and that he has in them that we're going to spread the ball around a whole lot. And, you know, that, that you'll see our guys that, you know, even though, uh, hey, they might get one or two catches here, but keep going because you never know when he's going to be able to find you. Uh, and he was able to do that to, to uh, get the, uh, the touchdown to Fred Brown. Cook will punt it away, a high wobbly kick. They're going to let it hit, and it bounces, and it's going to be down. Did they keep it in bounds or in uh, play? And it looked like they did. Somebody wow. grabbed it. He flipped it back. Somebody else caught it. He flipped it back, and they kept it at the one-yard line. That was yeah. unbelievable. Snap to lock. He looks, and now he wants to run. Bulldogs is going to drag him down along the 16-yard line with Richie Brown. He ran him down from the backside as he tried to scramble out of the pocket. Our guys are well aware of, of our second-half defense, and particularly our fourth-quarter defense. And, and um, you know, we, we, we feel like we can make it a three-quarter game. You know, if we can, we can have the lead going into the fourth quarter, um, we got a lot of confidence that we're going to be able to carry it out from there, and that's exactly what, it, what, it, what it happened on Thursday. This ball game is in the record book. Mississippi State has gone on the road in the Southeastern Conference on a Thursday night ball game and in inclement conditions. 31-13 final score. Mississippi State defeats the Missouri Tigers. Hey, heck of a win. Heck of a win in all phases. Hey, one of the top defenses in the league. They and they give the, I think they are a pretty solid defense. That was uh, 430 yards of offense and 31 points on the road in half of a, in half of a, a, a storm. Hey, special teams, pinning them, we talked about keeping them pinned deep all night long, not giving them opportunities. We did that on special teams, and I'll tell you what, when they got momentum in a driving uh, rainstorm, we bring a kickoff back to flip momentum right back our way. Great job. All three phases, man. All three phases. We talked a couple weeks ago. We got to continue to get better. That was a, we were a better football team tonight than we were against Kentucky. We were a better football team in every phase tonight than we were against Kentucky. Okay? Now, here's the challenge. We get to go back home. We get to go back home, and we got a big game next week. Okay? We got a really big one next week. Get up in here. Let's sing this. Hey. Hey.
At Sullivan's Office Supply, we've been selling quality office products and furniture in our area since 1959. We offer many brands and styles of office furniture. With free AutoCAD design, we help you decide the best arrangement for the function and then apply various price ranges and styles of furniture to fit that function. Let our experienced people at Sullivan's work with you to get you the best possible answer. You like working with us because we work with you. I was sitting in the, the hump watching our men's basketball team play their exhibition game and the uh, phone rang. I looked down and, and uh, Rocky Felker was calling and I had a feeling that uh, on a Friday night for Rocky to be calling it probably, probably wasn't good news and, and uh, obviously it wasn't. Uh, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, it's kind of numb when you first hear, hear that kind of news. Uh, you know, anytime you, you lose a young person, that's a, that's a tough deal. You know, it's, it's one of those deals, if, if, uh, if the message had been we lost a former player, um, you know, that would have been tough to hear. And uh, if, the, if the message was we've lost a, a, a current student, that would have been really tough to hear. To, to hear both in the same conversation was, uh, you know, just like I said, it was numbing and uh, just didn't really know how to respond. The hard thing as a coach is we're supposed to be the ones that have all the answers. You know, they come in here every day and we're supposed to tell them why something happened and, and, and how we make it better. And, and when, um, when you have an issue, you know, when you have an, something like this that strikes, um, you don't have an answer because it's beyond our understanding. And, and sometimes that, that is the answer. The answer is that you have to, you have to trust in, in a plan, you have to trust in something that is beyond our understanding. Um, and, and that doesn't, necessarily always console everybody but it's but it but it's you know it's it, it has to be the basis of our faith and um, and, and you know that um, that that's that's difficult you know because these these guys um, you know they, they they are our family and um, and you want to be there for them and this is a this is a very difficult time for everybody you know it's something that um, that God had in his plans and it's out of our control and uh, you know what we can do is is stick together as a family uh, I remember Keith the right way. I mean, he's, a, he's an amazing young man that gave you everything he had, uh, whatever it was he was doing. When, um, when the freshmen come in, and especially now with the internet and recruiting hype and, and all this, um, you know, the first thing we tell them is that the only thing that matters is what you do from the first day you're on our campus. And, um, and the first thing you have to do is you have to earn the respect of the locker room. And the only way you're in the respect of the locker room is with, is with your work ethic and your toughness. He's a person that, that every day he wanted to, he tried to be the absolute best he could be. It, it, it was the first week he was here in the summer. I mean, he established himself immediately as a guy that, uh, that all the older guys in the locker room had, had immense respect for. Um, and then all throughout fall camp, you know, we would put together, we would sort of make a daily highlight video of the best plays from the day before. Same thing, just, just, just put, focusing on what's real and who's really, you know, making plays and doing, you know, doing great things out in the field. And, and, uh, and he became a regular, you know, he, he, was, he was on it every day. It, it, it hurt us all. I mean, that was one of our brothers, no matter if you didn't talk to him on a daily basis, he was one of our brothers. And so he, he's like a real brother to me. MJ was great for him, man. And, you know, just looking at his locker today, it kind of touched me, you know, that I'm not going to see my guy again, man. You know, it, it just don't seem the same, man. Uh, it's sad. I mean, uh, it's sad. It's so unexpected, and uh, that's what hurts more than anything. Uh, so young, a lot of potential. Uh, great kid, worked hard, made me better each and every day. You know, MJ was a, was a guy who, uh, like so many successful young people we bring through our program, just was a perfect Mississippi State student athlete. Um, big smile on his face, worked hard, did everything the right way, did everything he was supposed to do, and had such a promising future. And, and uh, our football program and Coach Mullen have gotten a lot of credit, rightfully so, in recent years for uh, bringing young people like MJ into our program, giving them time to develop and mature, and giving them a structure around them to help them do so. And, and uh, you know, MJ was a guy that was going to fit right into that into that pattern, and uh, to see that opportunity cut short, similar to, to Nick Bell that we experienced five years ago, 
um, earlier in their early during their time here, uh, you know that, that that makes it even even a little bit harder to take just as someone who, who likes seeing young people come into our program and be successful. MJ got to live a part of his life that he wanted to live and that was spending his time with Mississippi State. And um, it's, it's a blessing to be where you are. You never, you really, you really don't really know how blessed you are until you lose a loved one. And you have to look at it, you have to wake up every day and just thank God for it. Uh, you know, I was in school with, when Keith was here and, and um, working in the athletic department and um, so I, I knew Keith a little bit and, and just remember him being a, a, a really good football player and, uh, and a good teammate. You know, he was a guy that the other guys liked being around and, uh, you know, he, he did a, he was part of some really good teams. You know, his name here almost 25 years after he's uh, finished playing at Mississippi State, his name still appears in our record book. So um, obviously he was a very good player and, and a good competitor. Well, anytime you lose a current player, you know, your first thought is, is you know, what do we need to do for our team? And, uh, and you know, it's interesting about this because our whole department is so tight-knit and uh, so many of our athletes are in classes together regardless of what sport they're in. They're in a study hall together, they eat together, um, they, they do things socially together. Uh, this affects more than just our football team. It's going to affect us either one way, I mean, a good way or a bad way, you know, we're going to we're gonna feel sad about it and just give up or we're gonna play for him, you know. And that's one of two things we can do, you know, and we're gonna play for our guy. <laughs> it's gonna be tough though, you know. Um, everybody takes everything different. And you know, some guys take it harder than some guys, but we all gotta pull it together as brothers, you know, <clears throat> and play for MJ. And so uh, we took it we took it our personal and we gotta play a chip on our shoulders Saturday for him. Yeah, there's you know, there's a lot of lessons. Um, you know, we talk about in sports about, you know, you learn a lot from winning, but sometimes you learn more from losing. And uh, obviously this is, you know, we've lost something a lot more important than a game um, when you talk about the loss of, of people who are important to you. Yeah, man, you never know how much you truly love someone until they're gone. And, you know, <clears throat> being here every day with the guy, you know, just going through everything with him, you know, you, be you become close with someone, you know. And you never know how much you really love them until you can't see them every day. And you know, it, it let us realize that, you know, take advantage of these opportunities, not through only football, but through life itself. Because you never know when it's your last down, you never know it's when your last time. So you just gotta take advantage of the opportunities you have in life, because life is very short. Uh, life, I mean, life's so much bigger than the game of football. So, I mean, for a second, you just gotta, you gotta put the game behind you. Uh, and just think about life. Just be grateful for every moment, every second we're given. And uh, like I said, uh, don't be afraid to uh, tell the ones you love them uh, that you love them. And just we got to love on each other here and just be brothers, just be a family uh, inside this football facility and this program. You know, this this is something that during their time here and even when they leave here, they're gonna they're gonna remember MJ and uh, they're gonna they're gonna take a lesson of how they, um, you know, they fought through this and, and got over this challenging time and. And uh, in the end, they're going to they're gonna honor MJ with whatever they do here at Mississippi State and beyond. I, and I'll be honest with you, and, and look at the legacy that he left. And, and you know, ask yourself what type of legacy you want to leave. When, 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 if something happens to you, what do you want people to say about you? And, um, you know, when you look and say, hey, here's an amazing young man that gave, was, tried to be the absolute best he could be at whatever it is he was doing, that's a pretty special legacy to leave behind. Tickets at Prime Sport? Yep, Prime Sport can get you tickets for anything. Even if it's sold out. Even if you want a VIP experience. Even if you want impossible to get seats. Even for <clears throat> a once in a lifetime event. Sorry. Even if you want to hang with celebrities. Prime Sport is the best. The best. Prime Sport, events that move you.
Alabama's an outstanding team, but I think as a, from a coach, what you look at is that they're 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 a team that's gotten better every week. You know, I think they've 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 found their identity. They've they've found out who their best players are. They found a way to use their best players, which is what any well-coached football team will do. Um, and they're and then and now they're just growing off of that identity, which is not all that dissimilar to me. What I feel like we're doing on defense, um, but certainly you know Derrick Henry is is the focal point because it all starts with the running game. You know, no matter who's the quarterback and the wide receiver at Alabama, and then they do a great job schematically of of presenting to you many formations for him to run the football in, and then every formation has a play action pass, um, and they've got some guys down the field that can really stress you and uh, create explosive plays. So it's a it is a challenge physically. But it is a challenge mentally every down, and uh, and generally speaking, a minor slip up in either uh, usually results in them scoring. And, and you know, with they've got an outstanding defense, so your margin for error is very thin. And they have so many playmakers across the board. You're gonna have to go go battle. It's gonna be a four quarter game, and you're gonna have to find a way to make, make find a way to make plays to win the game. Uh, in the end, I mean, they have they have depth. They, I, I I think they probably have more four and five star players sitting on the bench that can't even get on the field than we have in our roster. Uh, so, you know, when you're going to play a team that has that much depth and that much talent, you're going to have to 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 equal that and go make some great things happen. They have really good backs. They have good receivers. They have a good quarterback. We just got to uh, play the Mississippi State defense, and we'll be fine. Alabama is always going to have a um, good team, you know, um, have big physical backs and um, good quarterback who stands in the pocket with great wide receivers around him. So we got to wrap up and, you know, play our defense. We have playmakers. Uh, they have playmakers. Uh, we're just going to trust our talent and our game plan going into this game. Uh, I think they do a good job uh, with their fr uh, front seven. Uh, their defensive line and linebackers do a good job of working together, being physical off the ball. Uh, but we we're going to have a good game plan for them.